Hey there, it's Dennis uh, from BC Tesla Guy back here with another CCS adapter. Uh, this one is the A to Z uh, CCS Combo 1 adapter uh, for your Tesla Model S 3, X and Y. I'm going to do a speed test here. So I'm down to about 10%. I've got a uh, well-conditioned battery, so I'm expecting to get good results from it. But anyway, so let's get into it and let's see how it does. So what you're going to do is you're going to plug this into the, uh, so you're going to take this and plug that into the adapter, lock it in, open up the port and just plug it in. And then you can start the charge with uh, RF tag or I've got the app here. So I'm going to go ahead and start, start the charge. So you can see right there, we're at 195 kilowatts. Let's see if we can get up to 200. So we're maxed out at the amps there. You can see right now we're at 537 amps. And we're just about to cross the 200 output kilowatts in the car. So you can see right there, we're actually at 370 volts. So the difference between this and a Model S is we would get higher voltages. Let's go ahead and take a look inside. Okay, so we're sitting at around 190 kilowatts. So we're at 197 kilowatts there so we're doing pretty good we're about a minute in so far at 16 percent I can hear the um, car conditioning right now the pumps are running so we're 198 now the last time I did this I actually peaked out at uh, 203 kilowatts so we'll see if we get that high so 199 right now. And you can see right now we're still, the volts are still going up. Our amps are still sitting at the max that I've ever seen at this one. So 537 amps. So it looks pretty good. I think the last time I charged here was 380 volts at 537. So, and that was at about uh, 23 to 4% or something. Okay, so we're at 200, 201 right now. We'll probably peak out at 202 or 203. That seems to be where the max is. Very pleased with this. Again, at 21%, we're getting uh, 201 kilowatts, which is just fantastic. You know, for road trips, these adapters are gonna open up the world to uh, us Tesla drivers. We're at 201. Let's see what the. So at the charger, we're sitting at 205. 383 so we're still going up so that's good it's when this number starts to go up and this number drops then that means that we're going to start going down so 206 at the charger and there we go we're we peaked i saw a 203 right there very pleased with that And you can see the amps are dropping. So you did see that we peaked out at two, uh, 203 kilowatts uh, for a brief instance there. Now we did max out the amps at this charger at EVgo. 
the best I've actually seen here is 330 or 537 amps at about 380 volts. So that's basically what I've seen here. Okay, so we've been charging for about five minutes here. I'm just going to check the temperature. So on the handle, it's like 64. It's cold here. It's cold here. It's cold there. It's pretty, still pretty cool there. So let's see here. You can see we're at 85 degrees here after five minutes. And again, 83, 86. I mean, I was seeing 130 with the uh, Tesla adapter after about five minutes. I don't see, see it's cold here. everywhere on the adapter I would expect the hottest point to be here where all the currents going through but it's not going to get much hotter than this you can see it's like 85 degrees you can see here we've added uh, 19 kilowatts or 20 kilowatts uh, from the uh, charger we're at 34%. Okay, so we're um, a few minutes into this. We've added 18 kilowatts so far, and we're down to about 150 kilowatts at 35%. That's still really respectable. I mean, if you were to come in with a conditioned battery at this rate, you'd be really happy with uh, 150 kilowatts. Um, that's equivalent to a V2 charger at its max peak. So 37% we're doing really well. Okay, so we're still sitting at 8990 uh, Fahrenheit, which is really good. Yeah, it's not hot at all. This is really good. Now it's not going to get any hotter than this. I mean, the current is pretty low. Okay, so we've actually been charging for eight minutes. Yeah, we've, we've been charging for eight minutes and we've added 30%. So I'm going to stop the charge at 10 minutes and then we can discuss how this charge went. So a couple items I wanted to touch on about this adapter while we fi finalize the charge here is that the adapter, uh, like the Tesla one, so like the Tesla one here, um, they're just passive devices. They're, they connect to your car to the cable here, that's it. There's, we've added uh, about 28 kilowatts in the 10 minute session. Uh, we're still over 118 kilowatts at the charger. There's our volts and our amps. Very pleased with that. I'm just gonna stop the charge here. 
There you go. So one of the important pieces is, is once you've stopped the charge, the adapter gets unlocked from your car. And so you just need to pull this off. It's a two hand uh, operation and then disconnect the adapter. So let's go ahead through that process. So you're just gonna pull this out. You're going to press the button here and pull that out. And then you just put this away wherever it is that you're planning on storing it. Okay, if you're wondering if your car supports the CCS adapter, click on the car software, click on additional information, and right there it will say CCS adapter support enabled if your car supports it, and if it doesn't, it's a, it will say not installed. Anyway, that's a quick way to find out if you can use these adapters. The A to Z adapter does come with a nice little bag here. Um, I prefer to store it in a, like a camera case. So here are a couple items I just wanna touch on about this adapter. You can see how this adapter looks a little bit different than the Tesla one. So this is the Tesla one right here. Um, it's in a different form, you can see there. This one has a locking pin that I've uh, demonstrated in previous videos that doesn't really lock the cable. So I wouldn't rely on that to stop people from disconnecting you. Again, they do both have a locking mechanism for the Tesla. What I do like is this feels really solid. And I've asked a couple people, you know, which one of these do they think is a better adapter? And they've all said that this feels really good. Like, listen to that. It's solid. You take the Tesla one here. See that? Looks okay here, but obviously it's not solid here. There's empty space in these. Like I, I wouldn't tear one of these apart, but it's definitely not as solid as this one right here. So the A to Z. Um, another thing that I noticed between these two is taking the temperature right here on the adapter. Today I got about 90 degrees after charging uh, about 10 minutes, but I think it was like six, seven minutes in when I was peak uh, amperage, it was like 85 to 90. Whereas I did do the same test here on the Tesla as well as Handshow. And I'm going to run that again, but I did see like 130 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's well below the, the number that these stop working. I do feel that this one actually handles the, the temperature and high currents a little bit better. But that's just a personal opinion. I, I don't have anything other than checking the temperature and looking at the charger to see any difference. But I like how this one didn't get as hot, so it had a better contact somehow. I'm not sure exactly why they look. Kind of looks like this one's a little bit tighter, possibly. And then you can see here, here's the locking mechanism right there. It's going to have a ring that's going to go over top of that and then stop you from being able to press down on the button. And that will lock this in place. So the cable can't be disconnected, but it also has the locking piece. So when you start to initiate a charge, this locks into your car so no one can steal it. And then as long as you uh, have your car locked and charging, uh, if you walk away, they can't take this from you. Um, again, I really like how this feels. It's smaller, so it fits in the glove box. I've put it in there. Um, whereas the Tesla one, it has to be just in the right spot just to be able to go in there. Um, I'm not going to store mine in the glove box, but that is an option for you. You could put this easily in the compartment, uh, in the console as well, either the front one or the back one. Um, but what I'll be doing is putting it in my container. So I just have this little camera bag that I'm going to use. So 
So I just put both the J1772 and that adapter in there. And then it's protected. It's small enough that you can place it in the side right here. I've got a speaker, so it won't go there, but I just put it in the bottom storage area. So another advantage to the A to Z uh, CCS adapter is the company that sells it is out of uh, Quebec, uh, Canada. So you're buying from North America. Now they do, just like Tesla, have them manufactured overseas. But the company that you're dealing with is in Canada. Now, when I got this, it did take a bit of time to get to my place out in British Columbia, but wasn't anything to do with the A to Z. It was Canada Post. So I'd highly recommend this adapter. Now, uh, these tests that I'm doing are for like extreme speed tests. The average person, uh, as long as you're charging in a, a lower rate, so anywhere from let's say 40% up to 80%, all these adapters will be fine. Like I like this one. I, I'm really uh, impressed with the quality of it. So if you're interested in purchasing the A to Z CCS adapter, uh, I'll put a link in the description uh, to their website. Be sure to use my code at the last page of checkout bc tesla guy it's in the description that'll save you a few bucks as well currently it's 299.93 minus that discount code just remember that those prices include taxes and shipping so it's a great deal and again it 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 ends up being cheaper than the tesla one so uh, i think it's a great deal at this point uh, with the results that i've gotten if you like this video please uh, like this video subscribe to my channel ring that bell so you'll be notified when I release other videos like this and 